Welcome back, everybody. Thought I put together a new series for you. Basically, ask me anything on ZBrush, um, and I will try to answer you back pretty, you know, relatively soon if it's something that I can do. Otherwise, I'll just tell you. Sorry, I can't tell you. But I had a question recently come in about my quick horns video in ZBrush, and the question was basically, uh, actually, a couple questions. Uh, one was, how would you uh, set that up to rig? for animation uh, being two separate shells. Um, sorry, I can't really answer that part. Uh, I don't do animation. I really dislike rigging. It's just not my forte. Uh, actually, uh, this particular character was rigged for an animation. Sorry, I can't really show that to you just yet, but and it worked out really well. Um, but it was two separate shells uh, for the horns. Actually, you know, one here, one here. And it worked out really well. The only thing I can think of is whenever you're uh, rigging, you weight that p particular bone for the head, and you uh, you just weight it to where the horns are part of that head. Yeah, sorry, that's that's all I could tell you in that part. But what I can tell you about is the topology on how to do it. Now, since uh, horns don't uh, aren't really going to deform, you don't have to kill yourself trying to keep the edge flow. So let me solo this and bring up wireframe and we'll knock them down a bit. So you can see that I did keep some of the edge flow here or Z remesher did. Um, and your question was basically, you know, do I need to do that? Because it could be a very heavy on polygons for animation. It, and you're right on that part, but you don't necessarily need to keep that edge flow. So right now you can see the two horns are about 7600 polygons and it worked just fine for what we needed to do but if you need to get it lower for mobile gaming and stuff like that i'm going to kind of show you uh how how to reduce the poly count even more so what i did is i copied that one over decimated it down so we can basically start from scratch and basically start from a high poly and then get it down to a low poly so i'm going to show you real quickly how i would go about doing that so I'm going to turn off perspective there. That'll help. And what I want to do is I want to slice the model. And I just need to slice this end right here so I can control where the cap is. So this way when it unwraps, it should unwrap halfway decently. So we're going to do, I already picked a slice curve. We're going to do control shift. We're just going to cut right about there. There you go. Let me turn off the wireframe. There you go. And not the greatest cut, so we're going to try that again. Go up just a little bit there. There we go. I'm happy with that. So let's go. We're going to turn the wireframe back on so we can see what we're doing. Now, uh, a, new, a new method of projecting topology is in using the history recall brush. So if you hit control and tap your uh, history right here, where we're at right now, we can use that information. It'll store that information of that model and we could just project from there without having to create a new one. Yeah, you'll see here in just a second. So for now, let's go ahead and do Z mesh. We're gonna just, uh, we're gonna keep the groups and then Z mesh. And we're going to break it down even further than what it's already saying at 5,000 poly. I just want to get us started here. Just hurry up and wait. Because I can tell you right now, yeah. So it, it kind of did the same thing that I had previously. So what we want to do is half it. And we're going to keep on going down. We're going to try to get this thing below 1,000 polys.
Okay, so we're, we're below a thousand polygons now. So as you can tell, it kind of shrank it in just a little bit. But if you go to Subtool and go down to Project here, instead of Project All like you would if you had another Subtool in there, you can actually just hit Project History. Now, we're probably going to have to change the distance a bit. There we go. Now we're starting to get that volume back in there. Now I, let's do, actually, Control-Z, Z. I'm going to keep it nice and smooth like it is right now. And we're going to go over to UV Master. We're going to unwrap it super fast. And it being so, so lightweight, it takes no time at all. And if you hit Flatten, you can see it unwrapped it halfway decently. And then unflatten. Okay, so now let's do that project history again. Okay, so now we're getting our volume back. And we just keep on dividing until we get to a point where we're happy with it. I think uh, I need to do distance a little bit more. Because it, it, it shrunk it in pretty good. There we go. We're starting to get our form back there. And we'll do just do point one. There we go. Smooth him out. And project history. There we go. And as we start seeing uh, oddities as we go up we will fix them as we go we'll divide again project history and I think we got the right distance there so project history divide it project divide it project Not bad, we'll go up one more, just get rid of some of these uh, jagged jagged areas here, project history. Give it a sec there. And there we go. We're back to our original here. And let's, and as you can see, we now have a real nice retopologized horn, but lower down, here's your low poly that you can use to put into a game or wherever. So I'm going to show you real quick. So we'll do a uh, multi-map exporter, and we're just going to keep the maps at 2K, and the subdivision it's six so if we go to normal set it to six make sure it's on tangent smooth your normals uh, mesh export we'll just do sub subdivision level one uh, we could do ambient yeah and it'll even produce a displacement I think I already got everything at six okay and now all you have to do is Hit create all maps and we're gonna put it in here and it's gonna produce everything we need. Click save. Let it go through this little cycle real quick. Ambient occlusion usually takes the longest sometimes. Cool. Less than 30 seconds, we have it all ready to go into uh, a game engine. I'm going to actually take it into Marmoset, which is basically another sort of game engine. And we can set up, let me see, let me see. What did I want? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and lower this down to your lowest subdivision and go to FBX. Because FBX, you can smooth your normals on uh, export.
You can uh, export OBJ with smooth normals. It's uh, buried in your preferences there, but it's in there. I just never really do it. I just save it as FBX. So let me export horns. Got it in my folder there. Done. So we use that one instead. So let's pull up Marmoset. All right, let me pull in this FBX horn. Uh, bring it out a little bit. All right, so we can see it. I'm going to throw the default on there. And now we can just plug in our normal map. Boom. Don't really have anything else except occlusion. And we could do AO, boom. But as you can see, you can get a decent looking model, which is relatively lightweight, and bring it into whatever game engine you plan on using. And still, still have that detail with that normal map and it even made a displacement map if you wanted to do a high-end rendering in whatever render engine you're doing. But yeah, that's basically how I would go about it there, guys. I, I appreciate the question. Uh, do keep them coming, and I will try to make quick videos on it. I can't always guarantee it. At some, I may just be able to answer straight away. But this is a lot easier than trying to type out that whole scenario. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you learned a little bit here. And we will catch you in the next video. You guys have a great day.